With Boxcutter 717, special care has been taken to ensure that the eight exciting shapes that are now present are able to be quickly and easily accessed by users on the fly and swapped between to ensure that users are able to get the perfect cut each and every time. The new alt scroll added to this version of Boxcutter should allow users to alt scroll through their shape types even faster than ever to quickly find the perfect operation for the matter at hand. We wanted Box Cutter to work as effective as possible for users of all types of workflows, so emulate numpad, industry standard key map, and right mouse click support have all received improvements to extend the support for users of all types of workflow disciplines. New to this version of Box Cutter is the lasso shape, allowing users to draw freehand strokes with ease. This version of Box Cutter also has improvements with proportional draw, allowing you to finally draw with one to one proportions, allowing you to finally get that perfect custom cut. Fade is one of those systems that we love to see become a part of Box Cutter and we hated to see it go. And I'm happy to announce that with this update, Fade is back and now users can go in their behavior panel under display and change their fade to whatever parameter they want and have shapes fade in as long as they'd like or take as long as they want for the fade to exit. Fade has a myriad of uses extending to laser cut, repeat shape, and all sorts of things beyond just the visual aesthetics of fade itself, but I'm happy to announce that fade has returned to 717. For this version of Boss Cutter, we took a moment to reflect and try to optimize things to make things as fast as possible for things going forward. So among Raycast optimizations, we've also reduced the amount of destruction that happens with collections, greatly improving the workflow. We've also reduced the amount of orphans created from edit mode operations. We've also did a roll call on loops and tried to reduce the amount of loops that were being ran as well as refine the shader on the way in of returning this fade. We also reduced the amount of welds that are being used in action and tried to even reduce the amount of lookup calls resulting in a faster box cutter. I won't dare say that this is the fastest box cutter yet, but I do hope that users experience a faster box cutter than previous because we definitely put in everything we could on our side to make it as fast as possible. Whenever it comes to a Blender update, there is no shortage of emails messaging me saying, Hey, do you support that new blender? Well, even though a new blender came out, I just want to be known that not only do we support the current blender, we already in advance support the next blender, which is 2.91. If you are using box cutter with 2.91, while you may be experiencing some issues with alpha, you will also be able to use the Boolean solver toggle to experience a new Boolean solver in action and maybe help out with some testing for the new Boolean that's coming to the future of blender. So for this particular update, let's have a little fun. So I will take this cube and press SX 1.5 to just kill it out ever so slightly. And we'll use a little bit of hard ops and press Q and just round this bevel out. I actually see that I'm already in 2.91. So I'm just gonna press control C and copy my object and actually close 2.91 and go back to 2.90. We're gonna delete the original cube and just paste this cube back in. And so here we are in our 2.90 scene with our cube from 2.91. I just didn't want to work in 2.91 for an extended period of time for this. And so the next thing from here is we will press Control A and Visual Geometry to Mesh and I'll use Alt X in order to choose Bisect and we'll just choose to keep the top which basically eliminates the bottom and this gives us an interesting little start. So I'll look at it from top mode and we'll press Alt W and just start box cutter and I'll press Control X in order to switch over to knife and we'll just perform a knife operation. And you know, instead of just cutting one knife, I should actually press V and array it and maybe roll the wheel down and we'll just get two cuts very quickly. And with these cuts, I'm just gonna select both of these new loops that we added and just alt click EM macro in order to push these out evenly. And so after looking at it from top view, we can just draw another blue box right here to perform a cut all the way through. Maybe press control B to roll that up. And we'll just grab these two faces and pull them out. For the sake of simplicity, we'll just dissolve these faces or dissolve these edges. Let's try to undo that. Here we go. So now we have these edges all by their lonesome. We'll just press Control B and bell them nicely. Maybe press Alt X and re bisect this, unifying the bottom to be much more empty and isolated. However, it looks like we do have some double faces. So I'm just going to delete all the faces at the bottom. And we'll do that a second time. And I'll just select the boundary and we'll just fill that. 
We'll Alt X and I'll Alt Scroll to Modify or Apply to mirror it to the other side. We'll mirror it to the back as well. And that's basically us creating the top of this little toolbox. So from here, I can do a couple of things. One of the things I did on my original model was for one, I exited box cutter so I could select the face and then control click another face all the way to the other side and do the same thing in these locations. And we can just control click or actually shift click curve extract in order to turn this into its own piece. So now that this is its own piece, we can press control A and visual geometry to mesh. And I'm just gonna select these loops all the way around at the top parts and control click mark in order to bevel these. And we'll just come back and deal with them later. We can just mirror this of course across itself. Maybe we want to mirror using modifier. So we'll bring up mirror and reset it with X. Then we'll mirror it to the other side. So here we are looking at our shape so far so good. And so the next thing is we can just shift D duplicate, maybe just rotate 180 degrees to just get a bottom piece going. So here we are with our simple shape, just getting started. So looking at this in top view, I'm going to go ahead and just cut a square out uh, just on the front piece, just so we have something to work with later. However, we see that the uh, mirror just wasn't so nice to us in this situation. So I could press Q and bring back our bull scroll and we can just find the perfect middle ground for this to work out. However, in order for this to work out the way that we actually want it to, more than likely we want to apply the mirror and then re-mirror it the way that we want to be oriented correctly. So now we actually have the area mirrored the way that we want it adequately. So we'll just bring back our cutter and just make some further adjustments to just put a little bit of spacing here. And let's say we want to draw a handle. So the easiest way for me to do that would be to go in Ingon and we'll just draw a handle. Keep in mind, of course, for this, I'm not uh, referencing any images or anything, just kind of uh, modeling this off the top of my head since I've been doing these a lot lately, just for today. And so we could just press A to turn this into a make box and we'll just extrude this out. And of course, pull the other dot to make this not start on the inside. In fact, it appears that one of our dots isn't showing at the second. Kind of strange, there it is. So we can just alt scroll through our mirror till we get to mod and apply. We just want both sides to be exactly the same. And I chose this side to look exactly the same as. So the next thing is we could select both sides, press control B to bevel, alt X, mirror to the other side. And we're just mirroring destructively just for reasons that aren't completely apparent but sometimes it's just funner to just uh, mirror and go on the fly like you see me doing here. In fact, we'll place this perfectly back in the center just so I can pull this out the way it's supposed to. And we're just ensuring that we have a nice little handle going. So with this handle selected, we can just alt scroll back to end gun and just draw a shape. And let's actually try that again, this time without the complication. Perfect. So we'll cut that inside and we'll just alt scroll to end on line and we're just going to cut some lines. And after selecting the main shape, we could just select it, press X with mirror and just alt X mirror this to the other side. And to allow some area to breathe here, we will just switch over to box using our D pi and just draw a quick cut. And here we are so far so good. I can shift click sharpen in order to lower my auto smooth to get the shading to look right. And then we're just going to add a circle. So I'm going to press A, even though it's not perfectly oriented the way that I would like, we can just go in and correct that after the fact. I'll select the main shape with this as my sub shape and we'll just mirror that across itself. So that way we can get a nice even bar. In fact, if we wanted to, we could actually scale this in depending on where our object's orientation is on this thing, of course. And to really make this a little more visually interesting, we can grab these pieces and just bevel around them out. And then of course, mirrors this to the other side and to the back. 
And we could also do the same thing to this one. In fact, I could select this bottom piece, select the top one and press Control L and just mirror, link their object data. And that should actually put us in pretty good standing with this shape so far. So, so far so good with our shape that we're working on. I may want to also put some latches on the front just to help secure the form. So I will alt scroll back to box and we'll just press A to make it a make box and we'll extrude that out making a brand new box. One of the good things about fade is I love watching it fade make boxes back into existence. So we'll just apply to scale and look at this from side view and just begin making a series of cuts. Just looking at it from the side, knowing that we can always mirror it to the bottom if needed. And we can continue just making our cuts to trim our destiny in here. In fact, we can go to end con, jump up to line and just cut across, you know, maybe dividing it down the middle, just checking to see where my line went. There we go. That was the maneuver that I was going for. And then of course we can alt scroll back to wedge if we want and just begin cutting in some wedges to just put some interesting little patterns on our box. We can grab this piece, select the main piece, alt X, mirror it to the other side. However, this piece is already mirrored. So in order to add an additional mirror, we want to press A to add a new mirror and then we can mirror it to the other side. So here we are with our quick little utility box. And then if we want to get around to the back and just have some fun with that, let's go ahead and do that just so it's a complete box, you know what I'm saying? So we'll just jar box. Actually, we'll switch over to regular box by alt scrolling and we'll bring out our box. And here's our shape so far. We may want to bring it over just a little bit so it fits everything. And how do we want to do this? So we could actually bring in this edge, just control B bevel it so it's nice and rounded, and then just draw a box, press V in order to array, roll the wheel a couple of times, maybe even hold shift to get some fine adjustment going. And we now have this area just kind of cut into the back that we're just mirroring over to the other side. So with that, we've gotten in here and we've made a very quick an easy box without a whole lot of effort. I just wanted to end this video with me doing something that was a little bit more complex than just a regular box, just showing a little bit of box cutter in action. However, for this release, there has been a plethora of videos prepared for this release. So if you are needing more education about box cutter and how to use it, there are more than enough videos to explain it. So to conclude this, we'll just grab this, adjust this bevel, and to really have some fun with it, we'll press Shift P and just scroll through some custom bevel profiles until we find a custom bevel profile that fits the shape we want. We'll delete the one on the bottom and actually mirror the top shape down. And this is our result. So with that, I can wrap up this video and I thank you all for watching and I hope you find some enjoyment and fun out of Box Cutter 717.